Von Stefana Pils. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. It is so fucking hot out there. I mean, it's evening time now and it is absolutely sweltering. I've got a load of really nice beer from the Cotley Brewery in my fridge. But it is just too hot or I'm not in the mood for any ale at the moment. It's just lager with me. And I have to say, in this sort of weather, you cannot beat a good German Pilsner. And I have got one here from Weinstefana. Very historical brewery. Controversial though. Some people say it's the oldest brewery in the world. However, that is disputed. And it's disputed because Weinstefana originally documented their founding as 1146. I don't mean the time 1146, I mean the year 1146. However, in the 1950s, a document was found saying that there was a brewery there, a monastery that was brewing beer in 1040. And they took that as being their founding date. However, it has since been touted and put out there that the document that they were referring to is a 16th century forgery or a, a forgery from 1600 I should say probably the 17th century the start of the 17th century and that would make the Veltenberg brewery which is also in Bavaria a place called Kel Kelm I've got to try and say this right Kelheim the, that would make the Veltenberg brewery the oldest brewery in the world that was founded in 1050 there is documentation dating back from 1050 to prove that that was the case that is in a place called Kelheim and that is in Bavaria as well. So, you know, the controversy is there. Whether you want to believe Weinstefana is the oldest brewery in the world, whether you want to believe Weltenberg is the oldest brewery in the world, that is entirely up to you. You technically would be right in saying both, either or either. So, either way, the Germans have got the oldest brewery in the world. That's all you need to know. Right, enough about that. This brewery is absolutely fantastic. They are renowned for their vice beer. It is absolutely amazing. It is one of the best. It is up there, in my opinion, of course, it is up there with Schneider Weiss, who are the granddaddies of vice beer. My personal opinion is it's up there with them. They make some fantastic wheat beers. They make my favorite wheat beers. I have never tried their pills. This is gonna be a first for me. But if it's anything like their wheat beer then i am in for a treat so let's stop gassing and let's find out about this beer right it's a 500 ml bottle it is per premium bavaricum i mean and that's latin of some description it's 500 ml bottle it is 5.1 percent in the volume of course this confi conforms to the right 15 16 reinheitz bolt. It has got the EU protected status, if you can see that on there. It's a genuine Bavarian product. As you can see, this has come straight out of the fridge. It is cold and it really needs to be on a day like this. It has been sweltering all day. It's very muggy. I took the dogs out, I came back, I was dripping with sweat and it's just too hot. So let's stop gassing and let's get this beer open. Right, really hoping this is going to be a good one. Here's the cap. Typical Weinstefan Wein cap. Now, there is a yogurt called Weinstefan, believe it or not. 
I remember telling my mate, a German mate, how good Weinstefan was. And he looked at me as if I had two heads and he says, Weinstefan is a yogurt. I said, it's not a fucking yogurt, mate, that is beer. And this is what he's talking about. But he showed me, um, he brought a, it was like a, something you get from Aldi and it showed you uh, Weinstefan yogurt was on special offer and he gave it to me as a present, as a piss take. But yeah, German sense of humor. That is a what they do, yeah? Right, let's get this into a glass and have a little schnifter. What are we getting on, on the nose? Oh, it smells lovely. There's a nice, sweet, bready malt on that. Oh, and some spice as well. Now, I imagine they're using some Hallertauer hops on these. But it really is spicy, you can get that straight away. As you would expect from a Pilsner, it smells absolutely gorgeous. And it's got the characteristics of what, what I've been drinking today, but they're North German Pilsners. But it is, and there's some, there's some yeasty fennels coming from that. But it is like, like a herbal type flavor. There is, there's like a herbal type aroma. There is black pepper, grassy type aromas coming from, as you would expect from the noble hops that they use within this beer. Right, there's everything in the glass. It looks absolutely amazing. Straw, golden straw color. Quite aggressive carbonation on it. I could, you know, I could sit, I know it's weird. I, mean, I am a strange character, but I could sit here and sniff this all day. It just smells of, it smells of the Reinheitsgebot. That's what it smells of. Right, let's get it down the hatch. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Really nice. Really nice. Now this is the difference between a Hellas and a Pilsner. Now obviously you've got the Czech Pilsners which are really nice as well. The Hellas, I, you know, you see the word bandied about by a lot of craft brewers. And to be honest, in my opinion, and of course everything on this channel is my opinion, but I really don't think a lot of them understand the differences. I find Hellas is to be lighter, sweeter. Certainly German, German brewed Hellas is. I mean, you get Hellas beer brewed by every craft beer and his dog today but your your standard German Hellas brewers usually use sweet malts the hops aren't as forward as they are with German Pilsner now there is a slight difference I find between northern and southern German beer and I think that's got to be down to the hops they use or possibly the yeast strains or it could even be just people's taste I really don't know but this to me tastes like a typical German Pilsner bitter finish dry finish lots of them Hallertau or noble hops that they're using the um, SARS hops possibly that's been in there I'd, I'd say they're Hallertau or a mix of Hallertau select or something like that but you can really get that in the aroma and in the flavor as well so you're getting a reasonably bitter aftertaste with some grain in there as well. There's some slight lemon citrus in there as well. Aftertaste is very short, as you would expect with the German Pilsner. However, this isn't as dry as, for example, today I was trying the Jaeger the Jaeger Pilsner 
and the net was a very, very dry, bitter Pilsner. Super refreshing, a really nice, refreshing beer in this sort of temperature. This is a little less harsh. I find it a bit mellower in its flavour. Had all them flavours, but they were sort of toned down from what I can get. And that spice, it's coming through. And this, I think, is a yeasty ester that is on there. It's reminded me of coriander. It's very subtle. But I'm almost getting that, that Belgian type flavour. It is very subtle. You're going to have to really get your senses on to get that. But I am, I am picking that up slightly. It's definitely there. And it makes it interesting. I don't know how, I don't know how that would have got in there. A, a Belgian influence, well it's not Belgian influence, but it's definitely there. I can get coriander. It could be coming from the hops. It could be coming from the yeast, I'm not sure. But it's definitely there. It's very subtle. But it's really nice. I really do like that. So what's the verdict on Vine Stefana Pils? Yeah, it's a good one. And you have to remember you're drinking a Pils or a Pilsner and not a Hellas. I, I get the difference between the two. And as I said, you know, even though beer comes from Bavaria, you think you're going to be getting lovely, sweet Munich malts. You're not. I think a Pilsner, this is what a Pilsner needs to be like. It needs to have quite spicy hops, such as Sars. Sars, for me, is the perfect Pilsner hops. It's what the Czechs use in their, in their Pilsners. And they're, you know, they are the daddy of the Pilsners. And... <clears throat> And I think this translates into this one as well. And again, the Germans get it spot on. And this is my this is my gripe with craft brewers in the UK. If you drink a craft beer, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some exceptions. There are. But in my opinion, good lager is hard to brew over here. And craft brewers, yeah, you can throw a, a load of hops into an IPA and it will cover up a multitude of sins. But I think if you're going to be brewing lager, then... You've really got to be on the ball. And some craft brewers get it really wrong. They call them hellasses, they call them pilsners, and they're nothing as salt. I think there's a di there is a distinction between, it's not I think there is a distinction, there is. And they wouldn't be called that if there wasn't. But this gets it spot on for a pilsner. I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it a, a 9 out of 10. Just because I've tasted slightly better pilsners. But... That really doesn't take away from this. This is a fantastic Pilsner. I really recommend it as well. You know, there's a whole host of fantastic German Pilsers out there, but this is a rock solid one. Got all the characteristics of a Pilsner. And as I say, and I'm going to say it again, because I am sitting here absolutely sweltering, on a day like this, there really isn't any other beer that can get rid of your first, like a Pilsner or a, or a Helles from Germany. And remember, beer is working class champagne.